It's time for Flames Unfiltered, your spot for Calgary Flames Hockey Talk. Saturday night, the Flames get booed off the ice at the end of the game. Natalie, they had it coming. But man, what does four days do? Endings and the change of the attitude in Calgary. Good evening. Welcome to another edition of Flames Unfiltered, hosted by Kyle Lewis and Brad Brood. We are here on a Thursday, Flames Day off. They get back at it tomorrow night. Kyle, it's been a damn roller coaster, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, funny how much can change in such a short amount of time, as you said. Uh, I'm not entirely sure where my head's at with the whole thing, but uh, we'll flush that. I don't, we I don't even know where my head's at, to be honest with you, because Saturday night, I, I wrote it off, and you had been struggling with flames and negativity, and I was being Mr. Positive Guy the two weeks previous. Mm-hmm. Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Kind of hit a brick wall with this team, and well, I like, completely face planted. I mean, I was, so yeah. I was so angry. I was so angry. I I was I'm just, I was just frustrated with this team, and um, I don't know. I, and I was angry. It's the stuff I was reading in social media. I was angry at what I was watching on the ice. I was angry at pretty dang pretty much everything. But well, I wrote them off, happy. man. I wrote them off Saturday night, and then. I don't know. Monday came and things are different. And we're going to talk about that in the show today because it is much, much different. So I, I don't know. It's been a goofy ass week. It, it's been a goofy week in my life. It's been a goofy week for the flames. I, I I need to catch a break. And you know what? The flames have in the last couple of days caught some breaks. And I don't know. It's just been a weird week. Well, none bigger than the one in the last game, right? With that offside call. That's the biggest break they've had all season long in, in my mind. Now, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Like I had been, as you said, much more negative uh, for a variety of reasons in believing that this season was essentially done. I still mostly feel that way because they're still not in a playoff spot. Now, Winnipeg's free falling, but still not no. in a playoff spot. And if they lose, maybe say against the Ducks tomorrow night, that's two points you cannot lose, right? So, well, um, yeah. We're going to talk about that. Like, I mean, we could be happy as hell right now, but. At least it's interesting. At least it's interesting Jeez. because I, I don't. We, we we mentioned at the outset before we started recording tonight. We were of the mind at one point we may be talking about tanking, and there was lots of tank commander memes on Twitter and all kinds of hilarious things. I don't think that was ever necessarily realistic because this team was always going to push till the last couple weeks of the season at least to maybe make the playoffs. Um, so, but I think this puts that talk to bed because even if they miss, they're going to be like middle of the pack. I, I think that is to bad. I never really wanted that anyways, because I didn't I didn't really know how this team was gonna pull, pull that off with <laughs> well I you know what uh, I mean, yeah, that sounds crazy, even though they were playing well they're I too think. well equipped to lose. They're not as bad as they've been playing, obviously. We all know that. So no. it was never realistic to expect that they were gonna free fall because they're they are too good of a hockey team to to be that bad. Kyle, do you so, remember do you remember a year where your emotions were so with this team were so high and so low. I don't, I don't remember a year where I felt like we were the best team in the league. And at the same time, months later felt like we were the worst team in the league. Cause at the eight game mark of the season, I thought we were the best team in the league. Well, it sure seemed that way. That we were up there. Uh, well, I don't, I don't know. Usually it's been pretty clear. There was one season a few years ago where they rattled off like 10 straight wins. Um, and that was a bit of a, a swing. Now that was much earlier in the season, mind you. Um, so otherwise, no, either the team has been really, really good. Um, other, or really, really bad. Or as we've seen most times with this, with this team, just middling, right? Yeah. I don't know. Hope is still there. I'm, I'm being cautiously smart about my emotions right at the moment here with the team, but, uh, but hell, it's way better than, than Saturday night. Let's, let's, Let's get that straight. But big show today. We're going to talk four game recap, two at home that were losses, two on the road that were wins. Figure that one out. And then we'll dive into some Flames deadline talk, talk about the moves, our, get our take on what we think of the moves and the players. Um, is there hope? Kyle and I will discuss that. Uh, 
it, mathematically there's hope and uh, the way things are trending leads me to believe there's hope. Hell, I don't know what happens, but Kyle and I will break that down and then we'll wrap with a preview of three games ahead, two at home, one on the road, all three very winnable games. And uh, do you dare say must win in the situation that this team is in? Absolutely. It's time for another episode of Flames Unfiltered. All right, Kyle, we're going to rewind the clock to a, a week ago today when uh, Toronto came to the Saddle Dome. And I don't remember a hell of a lot about this game other than I was pretty frustrated after it. Um, Mark's from it's always Jeff. frustrating when Toronto's in, in town. It's always frustrating because the building belongs to Leafs fans and it's embarrassing and it's infuriating. Um, but the, the one thing that stands up with that game was Jacob Markstrom. That was he was excellent in that game. He was really, really good at, in, in this game. And I and all in all, I remember it being a solid effort for the team, just an effort that didn't reward us with goals. Yeah, yeah, I mean, essentially. I, shots we we actually got out shot. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I I don't know. Two, one was the final. I think, you know, I guess problems creating offense sticks in my head from this game and, and, and all the damn Leafs fans in the saddle dome stick in my head. Do you think that'll ever change? No, never. Never, How many generations do we have to go though, Kyle, where this gets bred out of the system for Leafs fans? Okay. Okay. The reason that the Leafs have and the Habs have so many fans in Western Canada is because they're the two original Canadian teams, right? Well, it's not just that; it's that the fans travel to go see them play anywhere they can, right? Um, I think that, I think that's a big part of it too. But I, I like that fan base is so delusional and so passionate, you know, to their credit that they'll continue to travel anywhere they need to. So, regardless how many actually live in the in the West, I think a lot of them will still go to the games. Doesn't mean like it's ever going to stop. And I wish like hell it would because they are just the most obnoxious fans in pro sports in my mind, based on my own experience being at the side alone when the Leafs were in town, for example. New York uh, Rangers are up there too. Really? Experiences, yes. Rangers fans suck. Um, I was at a Rangers game probably, oh man, time goes fast. Probably six, seven years ago now. I had uh, decent seats kind of behind the bench. Uh, it was Philly against the Rangers. I, I could have given two shits less who who won. New York fans absolutely piss me off because they don't show up for the beginning of the game. They sit in the bar and drink. Yeah. And nobody's sitting in their seats until the 13-minute mark of the first period. And then I had a little kid sitting next to me who I didn't know. Is, uh, it was a father and a son. And he had a Flyers jersey on. Neither one were cheering stupidly or wildly or anything at all. And people... New York Rangers fans were throwing stuff at a little eight-year-old kid. Oh, that's atrocious. And I just thought, you know, I know that's not a representation of all the New York fans. I'm not stupid. But, mm-hmm. you know, just to see stuff like that, it's like, I, 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 I you know, I just, I just felt horrible for the kid. And I felt horrible for, horrible for the dad because he was put in a difficult situation. And I thought, you know, this is stupid. This is stupid. Yeah. Thank goodness Calgary fans. I've never seen that in Calgary. Um. And you know what? I'm going to throw a bone to the Oilers fans. I've never seen it in my games that I've been to in Edmonton. Uh, I just talked about that whole situation with Manjipani and Backlund in the elevator, the hotel. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, But, I mean, you know what? Like, it's, every fan base has that, every single one of them. Just sometimes it's it depends on your own experience, uh, what city you're in, the opponent. I mean, all kinds of things. But some I actually, certainly worse than I actually had a really good experience at Edmonton one time. Uh had tickets, sat next to these two guys, younger guy. They're about the same age as me, probably. They'll be a little bit younger than me. Um, they they're like, You gotta be kidding me. We are sitting next to a Flames fan. He's like, These are season tickets. I had I had purchased them through a, a broker and uh they were good seats and these guys are pretty cool. And um by the end of the game, we were buying each other beers and we ended up going out for beers after the game too. And uh yeah. and, you know that it, it was it was good banter back and forth. So there, there's good, there's good fans. There's good the, fans. The best fans I ever met were in Columbus, Ohio. Really? No. Oh yeah, we walked out of the arena. We had our flame jerseys on. The Flames had beaten Columbus three nothing. This is back in uh, 2019, and 
three guys behind us hollered at us like, hey, good game. And I, I thought they were being sarcastic. So I turned around and said, thanks. And they said, you know, what are you guys doing now? It's like, well, we're going to go find a bar. It's like, well, tag along with us. We didn't buy a drink the entire night. Beat their team three, no, three nothing. And, you know, they we went four or five different bars. Like, they were that's unbelievable. That's cool, though. That's what hockey should be. I mean, yeah, like, especially, yeah. I want, you know, like I have a couple friends that are Edmonton Oilers fans. I have a few friends that are Van. I'm probably more than I should that are Vancouver Canucks fans. Um, but like that's what's fun though about sports is that banter back and forth. It, it it's that's what makes sports fun. So I don't know. Well, I guess it's time to talk about the Saturday night's game. Oh, Minnesota comes to town. You, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna get a beer. You can handle this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why do I gotta do all the damn dirty work, Kyle? Damn it. Yeah. Uh, there's they, there's nothing dirtier than that. They that the team absolutely deserved to be booed for that. That was pathetic. And they that, were those they were the, those are the games that make me wonder if we actually do have a chance to make the playoffs because the fact they could even show up for like that or rather not show up is very concerning. Do you? You know, sometimes teams need. Uh, moments right reality moments right and i felt like that night was a reality moment when when i when i see i believe it was zadorov behind the net with a puck fitting it was zadorov man you're right you rip on him a lot lately and well deserved but he's <sighs> go pissing me off lately hannafin's yeah, right yeah. they're holding hands next week <laughs> um but, it's off a brad shit list yeah they are they're right up there uh I just I, when that, when I heard the boos start coming, I was happy to be honest with you because they, they were well deserved. And even Daryl Sutter said I'd boo too. He did go on to say they weren't booing the team; they were booing the players, which I thought yeah. was funny because it, meaning that there is some players that are working their ass off, and there's a lot that aren't. And I thought yeah. that was interesting. But and, and you know what? Quite honestly, truthful. Um, I don't know. Well, it shows it shows engagement from the fans too, right? And I, and you know, with all due respect to this fan base and being a part of it, there's times you don't see enough engagement maybe on their part. Oh. Um, and, and a great example is how many Leafs fans are able to snap up tickets for those games, right? Um, Good point. Yeah I, yeah, I mean, there's different ways of looking at it, but um, no, I, like you said, well, well deserved. It was they had every right to boo, and and uh, that could be one of the games that comes back and, and haunts them in a few weeks' time. What's what sucked that night is I thought we wasted a good Markstrom performance. I thought he was really good. Yeah, well, he's he's been, he has been you know much much better lately. He looks better. Um, yeah, he's. Uh, I, I I said previously I didn't see him turning around this year, and there's a lot of different. You know, I didn't either. Yeah, I bet you know we both agreed that he was too good to not rebound to some extent, but now's the time to do it. I mean, but he's got to he's got to stay on this heater for sure. Otherwise, the playoffs aren't happening. Uh, Gustafson was very good that night. I, I, we, we definitely got, we got 31 shots, uh, but boy, was it just like a listless yeah. performance by the flames. I thought Hannafin and Zadora for a freaking train wreck out there. Caudry was frustrating me miserably that night also. And I'm probably forgetting a couple now, but you know what? Enough of that. Let's talk positives as I was at an all time low and I, I we talked about it over the weekend and touch base a little bit um, previous to the show on this, but on Monday when we, when they were playing Dallas, uh, Calgary played pretty good for the most part. Uh, I thought Markstrom played well, let in four, but I thought it was a, a decent outing for him. He didn't cost them the game, which he had no. in many other instances, right? Or set them behind way too early. No, but, they, but you know what the flames and this is where I got frustrated on Monday night. The Flames had a four to two lead in the third. Mm -hmm. Now, the mindset I'm in is that we we wrote this season off Saturday nights. So as I'm watching and I'm just kind of watching it, like my I don't give a shit attitude on on Monday night. Yeah. And then they tie it up, and I'm like, okay, please put us out of our misery. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that's right where I, that's where I was. And then yep. to fold scores with seven seconds to go. So I felt what, guilty because I should yeah, have been so I was going to ask you, what was your thought when to fully scored that goal? I thought, Oh God, here we go. It, it, I, I was like, Oh, let's drag the misery out. It, I, I was being, I was being a shitty person. I was being a wow. shitty person. I was, I was, I was, I was, that, that's not my criteria for a shitty person, but, um, 
I mean, good for you if, if you got the bar set that hot. No, I, my, my attitude sucked. My attitude sucked that night. Yeah. Like, I, I just wasn't in a good place with the team. Like, my attitude was, uh, I was just, I was. I almost took it like, oh, well, great. Now yeah. we get two points now after it's freaking dead, right? Like, let's gather points now once we're screwed. And that's yeah. kind of, you know, maybe right not the right way to do it, but I, I was. I was being a but You know, I don't, even even at this point, even despite that game and the one that followed it, I, I don't have an issue with that type of thinking because the reality is they put themselves in a position where everything they do isn't in their hands anymore, right? They can do only so much to potentially make the playoffs, but they still have to rely on someone like Winnipeg to falter. And quite honestly, for me, if it comes down to Winnipeg making it, that's going to be one of the teams I'll put my support behind because I think the Jets are a great hockey team. Um, okay. Yeah. Cheer for the Jets. Well, if, I mean, geographically, it makes sense, but I mean, they're a very passionate fan base. But I mean, I guess the point is, like, it still makes sense to be frustrated with the Flames because if they miss, it's their own goddamn fault. I mean, they have pissed away so many games. Um, so the difference now is they have they seem to have the goaltending they need, so maybe that's enough to make it happen. But they shouldn't be in this position. No. And then Monday night, I'm thinking, okay, well now they got to hop on a plane and fly from Dallas to Minnesota. That's yeah. that's that is not a, an easy flight. But that's never a, done it, but but you know, knowing knowing where both those places are located, I can't imagine it's an it's, easy one. It's a long flight. You don't change time zones, so they have that going for them. Yeah. You get to Minneapolis late. Jacob Markstrom goes back to back, which I thought was the right decision. Uh, well, he's this, been hot, so sure. This game was another one where I watched it, and I was like, I don't know how you felt during this game, Kyle, but I kind of felt like, well, what's going to happen now? I mean, nobody scoring. We, but there was chances. Like there was oh, chances. Yeah, all kinds, all kinds. I, I only got to watch it the next morning. I was out that night. Uh, I was at a, at a trade show in Nova Scotia, oh. but um, I got I watched it back the next day, and and it was uh, uh yeah, I didn't really know what to make of it either. It was I really didn't. bad. Really back and forth. The pace for a team that came off a back to back, the pace pace was quite good. Markstrom was good, making forty saves. Calgary had twenty six shots on Gustafson, who was really good again. That guy is just a flames killer. Yeah. And then, and then, then, the, then they, I guess you'd say the shit happens, man. All of a sudden, we go to overtime, and Minnesota scores. Then I thought it was over. A lot of I know people I left. I know Flames fans that, that turned the TV off. The Flames official account, you know, said game over. Yeah. Like on and Twitter. then all the stuff. With good reason. The, the players had left the bench, a lot of them. Like, you know, it's yeah. I I heard on the radio the next morning that Tyler Toffoli had said that some of the guys had their some were, had some of their equipment off already. Yeah. Toffoli goes, I'm not gonna lie, I get down my jersey off. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. But they get back and the, and the it gets overturned for an ice or for enough for ice offsides, yeah. and Kyle, I I think that was a good goal. One hundred percent. You look if you look at this league lacks so much consistency in this. There needs to be a rule change here. There's so inconsistent on in this call. It's two nights earlier. It's a goal. I think it was a Vancouver game. And I've seen like a handful of them this year. I think there's been five of them where it's been back and forth. One night they call it a goal and the next night they don't call it a goal. And it's like, I really don't even know what to think anymore. He clearly had possession of the puck. You now like, it wasn't on his stick when he crossed the line. Okay. But I didn't know that was one of the, I didn't know possession meant it had to be touching your blade. Well, that's, it doesn't. I mean, if you've ever handled a puck, you don't, you know, push it down the ice. You stick handle, right? So I just like, I know. It's a, I well, think it was it's as hell too. Yeah. Have you read the uh, the uh, what's it called? The Down Goes Brown book about the history of the NHL. I did. Yes. Oh, it's hilarious. Any any hockey fan that wants to know how stupid and ridiculous and can't get out of their own way this league is, read that book. And he, I mean, he could write an addendum to it that's just as I long as the original. Read, just, I have it on my shelf right here. I, he could. Yeah, mine, mine's, right, mine's right behind me. And I'm going to read it again because I haven't read it in a few years, but that's yeah, a great example. They don't time. even know the own fucking rules. They have no idea. Like it's. Well, we are better than the CFL, though. Oh, yeah, <laughs> of course. We're talking about real sports here, not Canadian football. <laughs> I actually like Canadian football's rules better than American. Football. I know a lot of Americans tell me that, and Canadians I, hate oh, it. It's so backwards. If the NFL adopted the CFL, the rules, not the way they handle shit, like, <laughs> yeah. not the way their league handles shit, but the yeah. way the rules actually, the game is a hell of a lot more exciting. 
It's it's like super exciting. I just, I don't know. It's it's crazy. <laughs> talking CFL shit and we get cut out. Uh, I you know I don't think it was an accident. Um, but yeah, like that's 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 a game where Calgary actually got a break. Like actually stole a game. I'm like oh my god. Like even though I know that that was absolutely a goal from Minnesota, I'm like I guess we're gonna take it. You know, I don't think we've had a break since Dennis Wyman decked that referee like six years ago. We haven't. That is. <laughs> how how have that? we done so many episodes together? And we've never talked about the Wyman. That, that oh. is the first time the Wyman effect was not in play. Yeah. Like, we, yeah, you're right. I never even thought of that just till you mentioned that. I can't. I mean, there's got to be another example, but I mean, I think about it and I, like, I really, I really don't know. I have no idea. I can't think of another one. I don't know. I don't know. It's a Weidman effect. It really does sound like a scientific theory, like the name Weidman. You know, it's. I, I think it was real. I, based on how that investigation and everything went, I I don't have much doubt that it was, which might make me sound like a conspiracy theorist, but I. But how long know. can it last since there's not Michael well, Blackley was the only player left on the team? Well, it was twenty. Was it twenty sixteen? Because they made the playoffs of Weidman in fifteen. I was there. It was, it was 2016. It was 2016. So the Weidman effect has lasted seven years. I said six. I was pretty close. It's like, gone now. And you know, we get another years. break that game too. This is funny because Ryan Hartman slashed the hell out of. Uh, they got fined for that too. He got fined 4,594 big ones, which <laughs> the fining is, is ridiculous. But it actually was That's good. Like 20 news. bucks to you or I. I know that's actually good news because if you look at that, if he would have got suspended, he would not have scored the game winning goal last night for the Minnesota wild beating the Winnipeg. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make the shit up. Oh, you cannot man. make this up. That's how ridiculous that is. Like, okay. All right. If the Flames luck is anything like mine, I'm just going to throw a real quick story in there. I played hockey on Monday night, and it's pickup. It's absolutely meaningless. I haven't played a beautiful game of hockey in ages, and I barely played any at all. But I took a wrist shot from the blue line, and it went up the shaft of somebody's stick, and I watched it fly through the air. It dropped it down, hit the crossbar on edge, so it was way louder than it should have been, hit the crossbar on edge, and fell into the net. And everybody just looks at me and like, oh, come on. Like It was such a fluke. I could never do it again. And it was ugly as all hell, but apparently I have the same kind of luck as my team right now. But the Flames are starting to get those crazy ass breaks, so aren't they? Like the yeah. that offsides thing, and then like the Hartman doesn't get suspended, and he scores, and I I don't know. And it was really know. it was that was very suspendable. That was actually sure. suspendable. That was a stupid, stupid play, and instead they find him. You know the price of the coffee. And, him. and didn't he get two penalties for it too? So we had four yeah. minutes, right? God, it, oh man, I, it worked out for us. This has been the funnest recap I think we've ever done. Yeah, <laughs> all thanks to the CFL and the Weidman effect. <laughs> it, I oh, were legit. They, I can't believe they came up during the recap of a zero zero game. <laughs> but <they had> first <laughs> shutout too. Holy shit! Yeah. Our first shutout. Yeah, yeah. I was super jacked about that. And the first thing I did when I when I saw it was. Like I gotta go and check his stats and see what that puts a save percentage at. Like I wanted to finish the year at least nine hundred, right? Oh, it's gonna be tough, but so he who, could. See, so the Oilers don't have any yet. They don't. Well, big shocker. Yeah, they got right? some good goalies there, don't they? <laughs> but but who, is there one other team that still doesn't? Does Montreal have any? I don't know. I I you're you're more of a you're more of a shutout guy because I could see it in some of our conversations and tweets, yeah. and I could see it in some of your tweets about how you were just. It was eating you alive when we weren't getting a shutout. Well, I'll just have a few, man. Like it's you know, every other team's getting them. You have to have it's like, oh yeah, the goaltender played great that night. Like we didn't get any of that until right now. I think Dan Valdar had a couple of good games and Markstrom had a few very early in the year, but I don't know. I like donuts, man. Whether it's hockey you know or literally, I like donuts. You know what the only thing that irritated me about this game? I can't even imagine. Why why is Walker Dewar not in this game? You know, whenever I hear Walker Dewar, I think of Walker, Texas Ranger, but that's... that's <laughs> He's from South Dakota. Oh, that's right, too, yeah. So, of course, you're upset, for one. 
No, I don't care. I don't even like South Dakota. <laughs> North Dakota people don't like South Dakota. Well, that's not true. But you guys like Sweden and Finland. Um, we actually get a lot more. It's Minnesota, North Dakota, not so much. Gotcha. Um, I, I don't know. That was a dumb move. I mean, if, I mean, he... I don't know how you take him out of the lineup at all because he's done everything. Know, he's been, he's been really, really good. It's like Jacob Pelche too. They both been those two guys have been fantastic. What did you think of the shootout? Uh, it was entertaining. It was really entertaining. It was. Uh, a lot of people talk about that Kadri shot, like wow, that was such a confident shot, which I always thought was kind of a funny thing to say. But you could see it. Like it, there's a lot of merit in that. Like you just ripped that puck. It's like yeah, there's mm-hmm. no way. He, it kind of reminded me of Owen Nolan on Hasek in the All Star game when he pointed. Like yeah. not that cocky, but it's like as soon as, like we as soon no as we, shot, we can be that cocky right now. <laughs> oh God, no, no. <laughs> Could you imagine coming. somebody coming in <laughs> like <laughs> shoot him? <laughs> oh God! Oh, that was, that was awesome. If somebody has the balls to do that on the team, it should be Tyler Toffoli because this guy's been money lately. Yeah, a lot of the Habs fans that I work with are, are still like. You know, they're stupid jokes like, oh, like, you know, Hab bailed you out again. It's like he, he was traded. He's no longer a Hab and hasn't been for some time. But anytime he does something good, they want to try and lay claim to him, right? So, yeah, I, re- I really underrated him. I really, really underrated him. He's been so close. Oh, while. Me and you, the, the brilliant minds that we are, we came up with him as our biggest worry coming into the season, remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We lost a few <laughs> followers after that one. Little did we know <laughs> that we yeah. would. A goalie that couldn't stop the puck for six months. Uh, I don't think anybody saw that coming. Now, I also, because Toffoli's been so good, I want to give a little shout-out to James Johnson for his hilarious uh, Tyler Toffoli video that he has that he posts every time Toffoli scores. So, um, God, it's, uh, I met James in Calgary last last May, and he's one of my favorite Flames fans, and I just I love that he did that. It was just fantastic. So, hopefully he keeps using it because that means Toffoli will still be hot. That's right. That's what we definitely, definitely need. Trade deadline came and went and busy up until the deadline. Uh, 41 trades in the National Hockey League in the two weeks leading up to it. In the past 10 years, the max was 20. We doubled it. Yep. And uh, deadline day was a little bit of a downer, but we there was nobody left to trade. Like, I don't know what people expected to happen that day. but Yeah, they gotta, the, the major networks are going to have to change their approach to that because deadline day is less and less meaningful every year. They started on TSN in Canada at like, 9 a.m. Nobody no. gets traded till about noon. No. So they keep recapping the same old trades and they go to all the analysts and all the different Canadian cities and nobody has anything to say except for how their coffee tastes. Like it's just the <laughs> worst. So I, I still enjoy that day though. I do. I, I still I do it. too, but it was so much cooler when we were younger and it was like no. you know, like like even like you know, um the year that Ole Oak and I got traded to Calgary. It's like wow, like what a wicked deal, like you know. Um Weidman effect, Ole Jokinen, CFL. What in the hell is going on this show? Well, I drank a lot earlier this week, like I said, so I probably still have some booze in my system. But, um, oh, uh, it, it's I, I still enjoy it too. Like you said, it's just it, there's just not I, enough happening. It's so goddamn boring. Well, I know. I, I I don't know what it. I don't know why I like it, but I do. I think. It's well, just I mean, of, it, it's fun when your team gets involved too. Like when the Flames uh, actually did end up making a couple of trades. Well, like last year, I mean. We made them prior to the deadline, but it still just made it kind of fun. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. We kind of both thought and were right on what we thought the Flames would do going into deadline. Some fringe help. We didn't think they would sell off. I mean, there really wasn't, according to everybody in the reports I've heard, the appetite was the, the offers were not huge. And you can't sell off if the offers aren't what you want, right? I think that's a smart move to not. Yeah, and I kind of indicated that I thought there was some possible good deals to be had based on what other players are getting for return, but nothing really materialized. I know uh, Elliot Friedman was talking about the Hurricanes looking at reacquiring Elias and Lindholm, and that was the Flames never seriously considered that, and nor should they. Uh, no. at this point. I think they're going to move a few of these guys on expiring contracts uh, probably over the summer, maybe just to change things up. Um, I think there'll be a few tweaking going on, and I think that has to happen, and I expect yep. it to happen. But in terms of the players they added, um, Nick Ritchie is a slightly better hockey player than his brother, in my mind. Okay, let's talk about that. Well, first, let's talk about the first trade. Let's see. This will take us literally two seconds. The first trade was with Toronto. We get Dryden Hunt for Raddy, Redeem Zahorna. Yeah. Any thoughts on that trade? I had no emotions on this one. I, 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 I don't think this one's a factor for us. 
I don't. Zahorna didn't do much to, you know, move the. He was good with with the Wranglers, but he didn't really move the needle in terms of oh. getting much of a chance with the Flames. Um, Hunt has quite good defensive metrics. He's a better player than people realize. So he actually, I could see him taking over a spot from like a Trevor Lewis next season potentially. Not saying that'll happen, but I think Calgary gets a slight edge in this trade because Zahorna to me is a guy who's he's got the size, but I don't think he'll ever truly use it, right? No, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. So we'll second, see how that plays out. But yeah, the second trade happened a few minutes later, and that one was the Flames sending Connor Mackey and Brett Ritchie to the Arizona Coyotes in return for Troy Stetcher and Nick Ritchie. Yeah, first time so, two brothers have ever been traded. Yeah. Um, so of course, Mackey Mackey gets a point in his first game with Arizona. Um, I, I want Connor Mackey to go and have a great career. I suspect he will, much like Valimaki uh, is now. In, Valimaki is the number one defenseman in Arizona at this point, which is kind of wild. Um, d- terrible asset management, but, I mean, it wasn't going to happen in Calgary. So it wasn't going to happen. There are certain times you get players where it's just not going to happen. Yep. And you know what? Yep. If if Sutter would have put Mackey back in and kept pushing with Mackey, the fan base would have been in an outrage. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So and that, that's that's the flip side of, of that trade. I mean, Mackey deserved a fresh start somewhere else. I think we talked before that he was likely to get one. Um, Troy Stetcher is a lot better than people realize. I like Troy Stetcher. Yeah, I was actually he was, he was sought after a couple of years ago. Yeah, he like to me. Uh, not knowing the nature of Stone's injury, knowing he's out for a while. Like Stetcher is a much better defensive defenseman than Michael Stone is. There's and no he, doubt about that. And he creates some offense too. He's a he's a yeah. good player. And yeah. you know what? You know what I liked about him the most? This gives us a 20 game audition to be yeah. able to sign him to a pretty reasonable contract for a defenseman that he does well. eight assists now this year as one with the Flames. I think he's got eight assists and there are no goals. And. Uh, I I like him though. Oh, I do too. I'm just saying I, I'm agreeing with you. I think that his you know the contract is because even his defensemen like they're everybody's rated how many points they score and he's had a not much of a year in that regard. But um, yeah, I think I think he's a good fit for the team and he's somebody they probably should resign because they can probably keep him for a million bucks or so. Yeah, he's at one point two right now, and I, I wouldn't think it would be a whole lot more than that if not maybe a million or a million two. And we yeah. got a defenseman that's fairly reliable and serviceable. Yep, can move up and you the if he'd be. He's kind of a pain in the ass to play against too, and I kind of like that. Of course you do. Who wouldn't? But I mean, he's he's not um, he's not particularly big, but he plays a little bit beyond his size, and um, yeah, he he actually thinking, and I've mentioned Dave Slumko a few times. Um, Stetcher <laughs> kind of fits that mold of a guy who's like that's exactly. You know, I'm thinking like, oh, who should we acquire for an extra D for a bit more depth for somebody who's a bit more capable? I never thought of Troy Stetcher, but when they acquired, I'm like, oh, of course, Troy Stetcher. So, yeah. So, Brett Ritchie for Nick Ritchie. We've seen Nick in two, three games now. Yeah. He had a goal, of course, in his first shift, so that skews the whole metrics on him. Um, all in all, I know you're probably not going to agree with me on this, but I, I don't. I'm not impressed. Like I don't. I mean, I well, I know my expectations weren't high, and he's playing on a line he shouldn't be playing on. Mm-hmm. But I, 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 he's taken some stupid penalties. I don't think he's as fast as Brett. Some people might argue with that with me. I, I think he's got a bit more when it's been proven. He has more of a scoring touch than Brett. But yes. I, don't him, I don't think that makes him more valuable. Um, Brett Ritchie is the only guy that I know has a scoring touch to score from behind the red line. Yeah. He scored, scored more goals from behind the net this year than he did in front of the net. But I don't, I don't know. I, I think both of them are pretty much a wash. Yeah, there's really no. I I would have been happy with Troy Stetcher and a pick coming back, because I st- I do think that there's guys in the AHL or guys in the roster now who are better. You know, Walker Dewar and Jacob Pelche neither one should come out of the lineup again. For example, um, he's a pending UFA. I don't think we bring him back. He's got, here's the difference that I here's what I don't understand. I know he we had to take him in this deal because I don't think we wanted him because Richie Brett's making seven fifty and Nick is making two point five. They're you not that much. Yes, they're not making oh, that God. much. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's yeah. no way we have. There's a handful of guys that'll make eight hundred thousand next year that'll do the exact same thing as Nick Ritchie. 
Yeah, and do it faster and better. Yeah. But with less I, penalties. I don't know. I, yeah. With the, and yeah. also, side note, uh, Brett's much better looking than his brother, I noticed. Like one, like like Nick's like losing his hair. He's got a bit more weight on him. Like, and I know that's completely irrelevant. When I saw him, like he's oh, younger. He's younger than Brett. Wow. You know what? And here's another thing. Does he not like his facial expressions and stuff? Does he not look like the kid from Goonies? Ah, <laughs> uh, we got to be done with this segment at this point, don't we? <laughs> All yes, right, he does. He does. Let's shift. Let's shift gears and talk playoffs. Okay, we thought we'd be talking playoffs for sure. Well, we're not, but you know what? There is a chance because oh. when I opened up the paper today, we don't do that anymore, do we? We pull up the internet, right? I miss the paper days. I do. We're four points back of the Winnipeg Jets, mm-hmm. with one game yeah. remaining against said Jets. I'm not saying I did some. I did some paperwork today to see if this is possible because everybody's telling me it's possible. And I wrote this damn team off Saturday night. So I have to, I have to build it into my system to see if it's possible. And you know what? After looking at the math, Kyle, <laughs> the glasses are dramatic it, effect. It's possible. <laughs> you don't even wear glasses. Do you? <laughs> no, but I'm old now. I need reading glasses. <laughs> okay. I need reading glasses, Kyle. Oh, Lord. God. So hear me out here. Here's our next four games. Home against Anaheim, home against Ottawa, in Arizona, and in Vegas. Yep. Here's Winnipeg's next four games. At Florida, at Tampa Bay, at Carolina, home to Boston. Yeah. Good luck. I feel like we can be tied with them after that. Oh, most certainly. I, I first of all, I'm disappointed that I have to root against the Senators on Saturday um, or like Sunday, it. rather, because I, I like the Senators. I love oh, the makeup I. of their team, and I want to see them make the playoffs because I think with the team they have, they can make some noise. But unfortunately, I need them to lose to the Flames. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, here is some. I, of the other, what's listen, that? Listen to some of the other things I researched today, Kyle. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna blow you away here. Calgary has two back-to-backs. Winnipeg has three. Calgary has 10 games at home, seven on the road. Winnipeg has seven at home, 10 on the road. Interesting. Calgary plays five games against current playoff teams. Winnipeg plays eight against current playoff teams. We play 11 with non-playoff teams. They play eight with non-playoff teams. We meet each other once head-to-head. Is that Winnipeg or Calgary? Which one? The head-to-head game. Well, we we play Winnipeg one time. Yeah, but is it in Winnipeg or in Calgary? It's, it is in Winnipeg. Okay, that's what I thought. With four games to go for Calgary. Oh, man, that's going to be a big game. And I broke it out, and I just did some rough who I think would win each of these games. Now, obviously, I'm throwing darts, right? And I've got, so far. I've got that game determining who goes to the playoffs. And we're basically writing off Nashville at this point, and I don't think that's insignificant to mention only because they aren't that far out, but they did sell. They're they're two points back of Calgary. Yeah, but they They got rid of Echo, got rid of Grandland. So I, what's that? Listen to this though, Kyle. They're four. They have four games in hand. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they do. They're two back with four games in hand. So I pray every night I watch. Here's the teams I'm following. I, I still, my gut tells me that Nash or that Seattle's going to eat a pile of shit. I'll probably wow. wrong, here. but I'm watching them to lose every night. I'm watching Winnipeg. I'm not done watching Edmonton because I don't trust their damn goalies at all. I don't trust their defense more than their goalies, but yep. And I'm watching Nashville too. Those are the teams I'm watching. So I just had a funny thought, and I don't know where it came from, but I was thinking of Nashville. Can you imagine a team with UC Saros and Dustin Wolf as your tandem, the shortest tandem probably in hockey history, and then hire Darren Pang as the goalie coach? How hilarious would that be? Oh, my God. I'm glad this is almost over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, man. So Markstrom, right? His yeah. last four starts, he's two and a two. not short goaltender, for the record. No, but he's got a <laughs> 2.21 goals against average and a 0.936 save percentage. Wild. 
Oh. To Foley, game winner the other night, shootout winner. These two guys are driving this team. If we get to the playoffs, these two are driving the bus. Yeah. Foley's going to have a career year. Kyle, this is a long shot. As a matter of fact, the athletic. Do you read the, did you read the athletic? Sure do. They've got Calgary at a 39% chance of making the playoffs, and they got a Winnipeg at a 53% chance. Man, that they also. They also have it coming down to that last game. They have them projected points one different. Wow. What uh, what day of the week is that game on, do you know? Oh, geez. Let me pull up the... Uh... That could be very important for those of us that live on the East Coast. <laughs> like, you're planning your bedtime on March here? Oh, I'm planning the day after. <laughs> oh, no, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Oh man. So also should mention uh Jonathan Huberto with an unbelievable pass, not to Foley Gold the other night. Also, very noteworthy. Uh, as you know, I'm a big fan of Jacob Pelche, former captain here in our junior hockey team. Um Pelche and Huberto have a real bromance as two Quebec born NHL players, uh, with a fairly good age difference between them. So I'd seen that it was Jacob Pelche's birthday and and Huberto tweeted them happy birthday, son. So you get to watch that relationship flourish. Flourish. It's uh, it's been quite fun. I'm not gonna. I, I think Peltier has been good, but I am gonna bring up something. We're gonna save it for next week because we don't have time. And I just want to see your reaction. But you know what? What he's doing on the bench, his that yeah. his enthusiasm and how he is with Huberto, it's good. It, that's a good thing. It's, it's, a real, it's a real good thing. You know, for all those people that decry Daryl Sutter and how serious he is and, you know, Alan Walsh's bullshit about, you know, lack of fun, I do think there is some truth to that in Daryl Sutter coach teams, and that's why I think guys like Pelche do a really good job balancing that out. Yeah. And his, and his wow. metrics as a player have been excellent as a rookie. Like, he's not scoring a lot yet, but he's looked really, really good. That Winnipeg game is on a Wednesday night, so we will have to do the show on Thursday that week. And that could be is, such a depressing show or such a fun show. It could be such a great show. Um, 5.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Ooh, I can watch that no problem. Perfect. Oh, I saw an interesting... Before we go to the, the game previews here, which we got to hit the fast forward button here. Um, I saw a tweet the other night that I thought was pretty good. It was from Jeremy Stanford, and he wrote... The Flames team has performed drastically beneath the sum of its parts. Brad's job is to assemble the parts. Daryl's job is to create the sum. Hmm. Interesting. And Trey Livin's getting all the heat. Daryl is now too, but I don't know. <laughs> it, it, he's right. He's right. The GM gives you the tools. It's your job to figure out how those tools go together and win. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I, I like it's it's hard to do a proper post mortem on a team until the, the season's over, obviously. Oh, yeah. Cuz we got hope, dude. We just went through it. We're going to catch the Jets. Uh, we'll, we'll see, hopefully. It starts hopefully. tonight. You know what starts tonight cuz the Jets play in Florida tonight, I believe. No. Oh, dang it. Is that tonight? <laughs> the Jets play tonight. Let's pull it up here. My phone is nowhere in sight. Thursday tonight, and the Jets don't play tonight. Everybody else does that we need to catch. We need the crack and to lose. Yeah. All right, let's uh, hit the fast forward button. We're going to recap oh, and we'll start recap. preview. So we get a preview what's coming up this weekend. All right, Cal. Three games to preview. We get it going Friday night. Anaheim in Calgary. <laughs> Anaheim seventh in the Pacific. They have a ninety minus ninety nine goals for goals against. Oof. I still hate the Ducks. I do too. It's funny because I love them when Paul Correa played for them, and then after Corey Perry, it ruined them for me. But and all those you know playoff battles. But uh, that should be a very well. That is a very very winnable game. Very winnable, but very freaking scary, too. Yeah. 
I'm interested to see how that one goes. I I, I don't know. Well, that, that, that'll be an interesting one. That's almost a must win. Second of four meetings between the two teams. Uh, they play two more times. One more time in Anaheim, one more time in Calgary. Calgary did win the first one around Christmas time, three to two. Sunday, Ottawa comes to town. We both kind of secretly cheer for Ottawa. I know. I That's a know. dangerous game. That's a really, really dangerous game. Ottawa is extremely skilled. So they've got points in seven of their last 10, but they're coming off a loss where they're. Kachuk lost his mind the other night. Yeah, uh, they're fighting for a playoff spot. They're five points out of a wild card spot. They're kind of in the same spot Calgary's in, to be honest with you. Yep, very similar. Very similar. Yeah. Then uh, Tuesday, Calgary heads to on the road for, I believe, a, just a couple game road trip was they head to Arizona and Vegas. The Arizona game is Tuesday night. Arizona seventh in the Central. They're playing 500 hockey lately, so they haven't been. Mm-hmm. Too bad. Third and final meeting. The Flames won three to two in December in Calgary, and the game they had to come from behind, but they won six to three in Arizona yep. in February. I don't know how many we do. We need five of the six points here. Absolutely, and also be mindful of Arizona. I suspect that Valimaki, especially and to a lesser extent Connor Mackey, would be looking to have big games. So, not that they're necessarily needle movers on any given night, but I mean they're they're going to be motivated for sure. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I, I I'm not. I I don't think. We're in no position at all to be overlooking anybody. No, and it starts with the Ducks tomorrow, right? And think about like, you know, six points with Anaheim. You got to get all six points. You just, there's no way you can't. And uh, we've seen it, you know, we saw it with Ottawa, a desperate team fighting for playoff spot, and they completely face plan against Chicago. Like, it's hard to, to, to overstate how important those games are, especially against lesser teams. Kyle, I'm going to push this whole thing a little further. I've never seen you wear your glasses this much in a podcast. I, I haven't had to read this much. We got to play San Jose two more times. We've got to play Vancouver two more times. We get Chicago one more time. We get Nashville one more time. I like the schedule, Kyle. I like it. Yeah, the, but those teams are going to want to play spoiler too, and all those teams get hot in the, in the you know the last quarter of the season. You know, getting ready wow. for next year, whatever they're doing. So. And I'm not an idiot. If I look at the schedule and how the scores from the previous part of the season, we lose to all those teams. So, well, and it, the big thing, the next thing to me as well is how is Dan Vladar going to play in his next start? Because I wonder if now that Markstrom has brought his game up, is Vladar kind of doing the same thing? I don't you know. know. I, I almost you just play Markstrom all the way through. <laughs> well, the results are there right now, so. I mean, if he, if he stumbles once, you put in Vladar, and who knows? You know what? The funny thing is, and this is so frequent with a backup goalie, and I, I still love Dan Vladar, and I still think he's a great goalie. But he you is, know yeah. what? Sometimes if Markstrom's going, Vladar will be right there when he gets his start. The keys got handed to me. He he bobbled a little bit. Yeah. it. You can name 100 goalies that have done that, especially on their first time they're handed the keys. I'm not writing off Dan Vladar at all. And quite I, honestly, if he had to come in in that back-to-back we have coming up here, uh, the 2021st, we have a back-to-back LA Anaheim. Excuse me, that's that's this month. Yeah, that's our next back-to-back. I, I'm not going to be upset. I'm not. I'm not going to be upset. I think Dan Vladar will do just fine. But I don't know. I'm just hoping I, that the hockey gods have kind of switched in our direction a little bit. Well, they have. Whether or not it's going to be enough is. We'll see. But at the very least, the people are going to, they can moan about it all they want. If the Flames end up missing the playoffs, I don't believe they're ever positioned to be a lottery team because they just, they're just not that bad. And one of the biggest knocks against the team is they're always middle of the pack. They're always going for it. They're always carrying, you know, expensive, talented players, whatever. Is that what we're supposed to do? Uh, to a point, player development, proper rebuilds, those things are important. And the Flames don't do a good job of that or haven't ever really chosen to. The last time they should have done one, they got nothing for the players. They traded Jay Bo, Mister Drum McGill, all that kind of thing. But the thing, the point is, people that want them to tank, I'm realistic, that they would tank. I have a bit of a problem with that because no. it's a team, you still should want them to be successful. As much as be nice to a guy like Connor Carr. I agree with you, Kyle. I mean, the team is playing meaningful hockey, and they don't deserve to be at all. So you take that as a win in itself. You enjoy the next. At least week, assuming that goes well, and you go into the next week. You take it a day at a time, right? So yep. This is a game at a time thing. Hey, we just we need to get points. We need to watch Winnipeg not get points. And 
let the cards fall where they may. But right now, I'm just. Hey, it matters. It matters, and that's fun because it gives us stuff to talk about, right? That's that's right. That's right, Kyle. It's not as depressing as the last few shows we had to do. We had, we had a couple tough ones there, didn't we? Yeah. It was been a, it was it was a very disappointing stretch for the Flames, and reality was setting in. And Kyle, I didn't think we'd be talking hockey into the playoffs, and and I don't know that we are now either. But at least we got a shot, right? Yeah. You know, say day at a time. Enjoy it. You know how long it's gonna last. Just like life in general. Just enjoy it while you can. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle and I are back next week, hopefully in a good mood, and hopefully still talking playoffs for the Flames. We'll see how it co- goes. One game at a time. Two points matter every single night. Have a good week, Flames fans. Adios, guys. Get connected. Flames Unfiltered can be found on Twitter at Flame Unfiltered. Check out the Facebook page at Flames Unfiltered. Host Brad Brood is on Twitter at Brad Brood. And host Kyle Lewis is on Twitter at Van Lewis14. Like what you hear? Rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Flames Unfiltered can be found on all the major podcast players. Want to watch the show? You got it. Check out Inside Edge Hockey Media Group for every show. Subscribe while you watch. Thanks for listening, watching, and interacting. Enjoy the hockey action. We call them playoff! Yeah, baby! Playoff! Yeah, baby! Thanks for tuning in to Flames Unfiltered. Check back for more action-packed Calgary Flames talk. This episode of Flames Unfiltered was copyrighted and produced by Inside Edge Hockey Media Group.